guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing the medium, and yes, this is only the medium, size of the Tribbiani Traveller by Sincerely Jen. Uh, I had never made it before this video. Uh, the video that I've uploaded before this is how to cut it all and how to interface and then miss a piece because I have done that. Uh, but yeah, so super huge, super cool. I really like this pattern. So if you'd like to see how I've done it, Please stay tuned. All right, now since I've never made this before, I've got like a whole bunch of bobbins because I don't really know how much it's going to take. I would assume not heaps, but you just never know. All right, so the first thing I'm going to start with is all my strap stuff uh, because they're the first things you have to attach, really. So I'm just going to put some double-sided tape down the center of all of them. like so and i did realize once i got off camera that i have cut uh my little side ones wrong so i'm only i only need them two inches wide because i'm actually using the one inch d rings i don't have one and a quarter inch d rings so i figure i'll make that correction on camera so you can see that's not the where are all my rulers oh it's over there that's okay i'll use this one so I'm just going to measure, this is one of my much less used rulers, I don't use it unless I'm too lazy to go and stand up and get the other one. So I've just got to uh, take off the extra little bit so that it will fit in the D-ring. Um, I bought this because I thought it was going to be amazing. Um, I just don't really use it. It's a six and a half square. So if I was doing lots of quilting, it's probably useful. Um, all right, I'm just going to chop off that excess. Yes, these are my zipper scissors. They are what I have next to me because I left all the other stuff over there because I was doing the video. All right, so we don't need that bit. If you have a use for the excess, don't throw it out, but half an inch would be fine if they were longer, but because they're only little, not really. Now I'm just eyeballing the center because it's a short distance and a short piece. I can actually eyeball it pretty well. I've had a lot of practice with centering. Then I'm just going to fold both sides into the center and then can work down the whole piece. Now, if I wanted to, I could do a nice contrasting thread colour. So this would also potentially look really good in black and maybe even orange. Um, but I want to stick with the yellow because that's what I've decided I want to do. So now I'm going to have it on a three and three quarter stitch allowance. And I'm going to sew one eighth of an inch down the centre. I'm not stitching the outside because I do still need to stitch this to the bag. And this to me just gives like a nice little added accent. And I like it, so I do it. I originally saw it done on the Baronia Bowler bag. Actually, I was thinking about this after I finished cutting and got ready to do the recording. I'm like, ugh, the Hullabaloo Hobo bag I recently did. I really love their pleated inside pocket. So after I've officially made one to see how much I do and don't love this bag, although I think I'm going to love it, it's more about the size, I will probably from then on sell the bag with the pleated pocket because I really like how it's done. But we'll see. I'm going to chop off this one. So I'm going to chain stitch all of this because I don't like wastage of thread. While thread's not crazy expensive, it adds up with how much you throw in the bin. So it's much more cost effective to chain stitch everything. And you'll notice I've been practicing my folding both sides at the same time thing. Practice really does make perfect because I'm killing it. All right, down the center. Now, if you can't judge the center 
flip it over so you can see where you've joined the center. I just do this a lot and have now got practice. Another thing you could do is get like a Chaco pen or an erasable pen and draw a line down the center on the top. I do it this way because I like the way the top stitching looks. But you don't have to. You could skip this whole section altogether if you wanted to. It would make for a quicker bag. All right, down the center. Chop that off, stick it aside. So the trick is to get a nice straight line, is don't look at the needle. It's your first mistake. The second you look at the needle, you're done for. You look at the fabric and see where it's sitting, would be my advice. I never look at the needle. It's doing its thing. You'll hear it if it's not. The more you sew, the more you get in tune with your machine. So I can tell when it's top stitching or like it's stitching has stopped because it sounds different. I can also tell when it's close to running out because it gets a more tinny sound, mine. So I can hear that it, there's more metal and less thread. You become very in tune with your machine if you sit at it all day every day. I promise. Last one of these straps and then I'm also going to do the handles just because they're sitting here. You can't see but they're sitting here. So I'm going to do those as well. Now if your vinyl is being more stubborn uh, you can and won't stay down, you can either score the edges or you can use Wonder Clips to clip it in place. But this marine vinyl is lovely and does what I ask it to without a fuss. Alright, handles. So my handles are going to have the fabric accent, as if you watched the video you saw, or probably at the start of this video, because I keep forgetting I do the end at the start. Anyway. Double-sided tape, make sure it doesn't hang off the end, you don't want that. So I'm just going to do all my strapping now, except for the big strap, because I have to get up and iron some more stuff for that, but you've got to sew before you iron. Okie dokie. Peel off the backing. Now my double sided tape is from the reject shop. It's like $2.50 for 25 meters or something. Insanely cheap. So I buy like a lot at a time. I buy like five or six at a time. And then I don't have to go back to the shops as often because, you know, stay home and all that jazz. So I'm just bringing both sides in and then just pushing it down to stick to the tape properly. Which actually works really well. I like that. Okay. So then I'm going to take my piece of fabric and put the raw sides together. Now I've deliberately made this a little bit smaller so that you will see an accent of the vinyl on the edge of the Simpsons fabric. I've done, I've gone to the center and I've done a couple of back stitches and then some forward stitches. What this does, I've decided I like this way better because it creates less bulk in the corner when we get there and we have to back stitch. All right, so then I'm just gonna hold it and center it and I'm sewing one eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric, not the vinyl. Because I wanna stitch the fabric down close to the edge and I'm just doing it in sections, as you can tell. 
Now, if you don't want to do it this way, you can, of course, uh, put another piece of double-sided tape and stick it all together. Uh, do be aware that sometimes the cotton will stretch as you're sewing it, so I just had to tuck under a little bit extra. That happens quite a lot uh, because I didn't interface it, but I didn't want the handles too thick, which is why I didn't interface it. Because of my glorious ironing, that didn't lift as I was stitching it. Get to the corner, couple of back stitches. Voila, one awesome looking strap. So these straps always look best when the pattern's really small. So because the, the Simpsons are quite small, I get quite a few people's heads on the strap. If this was a really big print, I actually probably wouldn't do the straps this way. I would probably put a vinyl accent piece down the center. That end doesn't want to come off. Awesome. So again, I'm just going to fold both sides into the center. such blaring music yesterday it's weird to be quiet today but I don't play music in my videos because I get all these notifications that copyright this and copyright that and besides if I have music on you might not be able to hear me talk I doubt that but you never know all right smooth that down grab your other piece. Now I can tell that this is the piece that I ironed the two sides individually because it's not sitting as nice. So don't do it that way. I did it to prove a point. Don't, don't you do it. It's not ideal. All right, so I'm gonna lay both of these down between my legs so that they're gonna sit straight at the machine. And then I'm just gonna hold it in the center and stitch one eighth of an inch from the edge. And the reason I'm just doing little bits is because I don't wanna, I already go through so much double-sided tape, like it's insane. I will easily use 25 meters a week, easy. It's just a thing that happens in this house. Uh, so I would prefer not to have to go through more than that. One more. So I'm going to crank the last one to make sure that it's going to line up on my 1 8 line. You can always go a bit faster on this side because everything's kind of held in by the other side. Okay, second strap done. So now I'm going to grab, wherever I put it, the pieces for the big strap. So I cut two three inch pieces, let me just find them. So there's the vinyl, what's the bet it fell on the floor? It did, hold on. Crisis averted, I got it, we're fine. All right, so I'm gonna open this out. Ow. My zip just my zipper jig just attacked me and took off some skin. Awesome. Okay, so I am gonna do this like quilt binding. If you've never done quilt binding, don't stress, I'm gonna show you what we're doing. So I'm gonna have them both facing the right way, and then I'm gonna take this one and fold it 90 degrees so that we get like a cross. I'm making sure that all of the non-printed part is not touching the fabric because I don't want to stitch that in. We're going to chop it off. And then I'm going to sew diagonally from this join down across to that join. Now, the reason I do this is because it will actually spread out the bulk because we need a longer piece. If you were to do it straight, you could, but... Oh, that really hurts. It's bleeding now. Bugger. Um... What that will happen is when we fold the sides down, you're not just going to have this one big super bulky part. 
which means that when you're trying to use your strap adjuster, it's going to glide more freely over the join. Um, another option is, is just use wider fabric and then you won't have to do this. But, so I've just chopped off, so it's like these weird little pieces. And I've still left some fabric there because I'm actually going to go to the iron. So the first thing I'm going to do with the iron is iron that open. And then I'm just going to do that thing again where I iron each side into the center. I'm going to do the whole piece, but I'm probably only going to need about that much past the join that I just did. But it's easier to cut it like this than with the strips because then they're straight. All right, so I'm going to hit pause. And I go iron this, I'll be right back. Okie dokie. So, I didn't iron all the way because I know I don't need that bit. Uh, but I just want to show you the join. I think it's actually really hard to find. So, on the inside, I've ironed it flat. And then that sits pretty flat. I know it doesn't look like it yet. When I iron it, you're going to barely see that join because I pressed it really well. Okay. Again, should have done the middle line. I'm going to eyeball it. Been doing this long enough, you would hope that I could eyeball roughly a center. Don't feel bad if you can't. Please draw the line. But all the good big rulers are all over there. I should have grabbed them. I didn't. I'm moving on. I also try and keep a relatively clean workbench right here. Like, just off camera, it's quite trash where the pile of everything is. Um, but on my sewing machine, I don't like to have too much mess. It doesn't work in my favour, ever. So, the little table thing that you guys are actually sitting on is usually where I put projects when I'm not recording. Uh, when I am recording, they pop onto the little really trolley where all my um, presses and things live. So again, I'm just going to fold it into the center and push it down. I actually find, and this is weird, I find that I'm better at folding this in the center when there's no center line. The center line makes me, I don't know, more of a perfectionist, I guess. And it has to be exactly on the line. Whereas this way, it's still in the center. It's just a bit quicker. So I don't know. My brain's weird, what can I say? So this might also be a good thing to do over on your cutting table. So I've just dropped a bunch of stuff on the floor because it knocked it because it's so long. So now I'm getting close to the end. I'm actually going to come to the end and make sure that that end is squared up. And then move my way back the other way. And it all works out pretty well, actually. Oops, except that bit. So if it if you miss or whatever, you can just lift it up. It's only tape. It's not glue. It's not forever. Okay. Needle up. Grab the end that you actually ironed. So I'm going to line that up in the center. So this one's going to have a little bit more yellow showing than the other one. That is deliberate. So I started in the center, backstitched, and then come forward. And then I'm going to take all of this and stick it so it's straight in line because that'll be easy to line it all up. And again, I'm still just using an eighth of an inch. Might actually crank this up to a decent length though. There we go. Three and three quarter stitch length. You won't see that little bit that I did with the smaller stitch length because that's the end I'll put the strap adjuster on. So you won't see that I just did that. Just if you're wondering. Nobody but you will ever know it's there. I promise somebody buying your bag is not hunting for flaws. They're just looking at how awesome it is and that they want it. Tends to be how that goes. 
and that floor I can hide anyway. I really do like this print on this strap. I'm getting a lot of faces on here. So I'm using my hand to kind of squish it and make sure that it's centered. And then I just move my hand down and adjust accordingly. Now I'm about to come up to the, the joins to see if you can hear it. Ah, see, I've already done it. You can't hear it because it's so flat. Iron it first. Iron it open so that it's as flat as possible. You will thank me. You don't have to, but mentally be like, oh my god. Alright, so I'm getting close to the end. And obviously I've got all this extra fabric. So I'm just going to chop about half an inch past the vinyl. So this piece I will use for straps and wristlet straps and things. So I won't throw that out. It won't be wasted, but it was definitely easier to cut and prep this bag to do it that way. And to be honest, if I was making two of these bags, I would just cut three of these pieces and that would make two of the straps. And you could just have it as a continuous piece. It'd be much easier to deal with. Now... I'm going to have my needle down and pivot. One more. So I'm going to manually crank this last one so that I get it to the eighth of an inch that I want. See, did you hear the difference? I did not. It was so flat. And usually I can tell when it's driving over things it doesn't like. It makes different noises. I could go really fast. Um, the last time I did that though, some of my stitches couldn't cope and become loopy. And then I had to unpick it and restitch it. So it's better for me to go that slower speed. Because it's ultimately quicker than having to unpick all the stitches that went dodgy. Oh, hold on a second. So what's happened since I hit pause? I've had three phone calls and I had my last lot of interfacing show up. So yay, after this video, I will go and put all of that on the website. Um, so where was I up to? Okay, so while I was on the phone, I've just folded over one inch and I put all of my square rings onto the big strap connectors, but then I thought I'd stop and do the little ones so that you could see, because uh, it was a very long phone call. So you just slide it on, and now I want to have the flat side where the join side is, and then I'm just using the ruler that's on my machine to measure down one inch and then fold it over. And then I grab two wonder clips and just clip it in place. So I've just done that to all of my straps. And over we go. So it is actually the stabilizer that showed up. The, um, so I got more bag foam and the heavy stabilizer that I was nearly out of in the cutting video. I now have more of it. Alright, so I am going to grab my side piece and fold it in half and find the centre. I'm not going to use my snips because every time I do I cut myself, which is not ideal. So I just want to be able to find the centre of both of these. Because that is where we're going to line up our D-ring straps. So if you want to, I also grabbed my ruler because I was smart. So I'm just going to grab uh, my friction pen. Now these you can get at like anywhere. Coles, Woolworths, Office Supplies, probably Office Works as well. I don't know. Uh, but I'm just going to put a line up the centre so that I can help centre this on. Put that there and there. Turn everything back on. I've been not sewing for about an hour. 
So then I'm just going to line that up in the center and I'm going to stitch along with a three and three quarter stitch length, which is what I use for everything else. So I haven't actually altered that. So then I can see the line so I can line the middle up. You can also use some double sided tape if you wanted to, to stick this down. Um, but I can see that that is nice and lined up. So I'm going to stitch up basically till my foot hits the metal. And then when I turn, it won't try and drive over the metal, giving me a nice straight line. And then back down the other side. And I always back stitch because I like to lock everything in everywhere. Then I'm going to grab this one and do the same thing. So again, I'm lining up that centre fold on the line that I drew. If you don't think that you could do that, you could draw a line half an inch over and then you could line the edge of it up if you prefer to do it that way. Uh, so you, what would be really good for that is either the friction pen or if you're using a darker colour, you could use a, a chaco pen, chalco pen. I don't really know how to pronounce it. There's no L for like chalk, it's chaco. Anyway, so then we've got a strap connector, which is the main point of the day. Stitch across. Now, if you want to as well, you could put in a rivet here to make it uh, extra strong. I will be doing that because I think it looks cool. So, to do that, you just need a hole punch. My hole punch is from Bunnings. I have done a video with the links to everything I use in every video ever, pretty much. So I'm just punching a hole between all the stitching. So I don't want to cut the stitching. I'm just punching a hole in the center of everywhere and making sure that it's catching the tab that I pushed underneath because that's going to give it added stability. Then I'm just going to grab some rivets from the drawer if it wants to come out. I usually have these prepped. Probably should have done that in the hour that I was not recording. But anyway, moving on. Okay. So this is a cam press for those that have never seen one. They press your rivets really nicely. So I'm just going to put the post in and then you can click the cap on the back usually makes a click sound, it means that it won't fall off, and then you can just squish it down. If you are into bag making or if you're thinking about getting into it, these are pretty much a must have. You can get different dies to do all different things, um, but rivets is the main thing you'll probably use it for, and it is a game changer. Okay, so now I've done those, I'm gonna pop those aside because my straps are on, so it's less things laying around. So then I'm going to grab my big outside piece. I'm going to fold it in half and find the centre at the bottom. I don't care about the centre at the top, but the centre at the bottom is pretty important. So what I do is I line up the edges and then just crease it and cut a little bit of a triangle out of the fabric as well as the foam so that you can see it. So I'm going to do that to both. You can fold it either way, it doesn't actually matter. As you can see, my foam's a little bit too long, so I should probably chop that off. It's just hanging out the bottom. These are my spring-loaded Fiskars scissors. They are definitely my favourite pair of scissors I possess. The others are cool and necessary, but they are just my favourite. All right, so ruler, removable uh, friction pen, and then we want to measure. So different bags have different measurements out, but I checked this, and we want to go two and three quarters for this size. Then I'm going to rule a line, and then I'm going to do the same. The two and three quarters was there. The two and three quarters is there. 
And again, rule a line. So this is where your strap connectors are going to be stitched onto. Remember, keep your space as clear as possible for as long as possible because it will help. All right, so I'm going to grab one. So obviously we want this side facing down. And I'm going to stick it on the outside. So my line is here on the inside part. So these will sit like that so that there's a gap. So I'm still on my three and three quarter stitch length. I haven't changed that. It's another good reason to do all of this now. I also need to be conscious of my bobbin as I think it's close to running out. Move my skull bowl so I don't knock all my clips onto the floor because that is also not ideal. And then one more and then needle down and pivot. Now I've got a knee lift on the machine so I don't have to manually lift it. Um, a lot of domestic machines you can get a knee lift as an add-on. If you are into bag making I highly recommend it. It is amazing. I mean it's amazing for everything but it's just an extra hand that you don't necessarily need to have. Okay so I have run out of bobbin thread as I thought I was going to but that's okay because I made like three of these before I started the video to ensure that I would not run out. So with um, industrial machines you should be able to hold on to the thread without the bobbin unraveling but if you give it a little bit of a shake it should fall out a little bit. That's how you know the tension is correct in the bobbin. Uh, a guy taught me that that does servicing of machines so I assume he's right. He's the one that services it. Alright so I'm just stitching along. Now if all my measurements are correct the holes that I pierced you won't be able to see because we're going straight over them or straight into them whichever way that may be. Lift up the needle, pull it out. I have to have a little bit of a tail otherwise when I start stitching uh, my top thread gets sucked up into the machine and then I have to re-thread. But I like to keep as little as possible. I'm also going to just chop off the little tail from there and so now I've got one of our straps on. Now time to do the other side. So do the same thing without the bobbin change, theoretically. So I'm just going to crease it there to get it up under the machine. And I'm lining this up along that line that I drew. Now a little bit of steam will make it go away if you can see it after you finish stitching. I'm fairly confident you won't see it though. So I'm just folding the rest of this bag out of the way so that it's not knocking anything because if it knocks on things it might displace our stitches making them not beautiful and straight which is obviously something I don't want. So I'm going to actually do one more stitch that way so that my foot is now up against the metal. One more needle down and pivot and then down we go. Back stitch, chop off your tails, and so that's one done. Now we're going to do the other one. Oh, I haven't marked it yet, that's okay. Grab your pen or your marker thing. Two and three quarters. Always check your math, make sure it's correct. You don't want to do it too wide or too thin and you want them to be the same so that it all, the handles will basically be the same. If you have these ones too wider and the other ones thinner, one handle is going to sit higher than the other one. On the outside like that. You also notice I always go um, right to left because I like this side. I like to judge my um, stitch allowance with this side of the foot and on the other side. I can do it with the other side, I just prefer this side. I'm 
also going to put rivets on this to give it some extra stability and because um, I like the look of rivets. Uh, when I do skull bags, I actually like to do a few rivets because I like the look of it. it. Looks a bit more grungy and badass, I guess. But on this, it will just help to break up all the yellow a little bit. Chop off the tails, because if we chop tails as we go, we don't have a million to do at the end of the sewing. Alright, last one. Line it up with the bottom and your line. Fold this over out of the way. Backstitch. Always backstitch. Locks everything into place. Uh, if you wanted to as well, uh, I've never made this, so I'm just kind of spitballing here. But what you could actually do is put a pocket here, uh, so you could do like a zippered pocket piece, and then just hide the edges under here, so you could have a zippered pocket on the front. That could be something fun to do with this bag. You could also, if you wanted to, make the side panels... Um, pockets as well so you could just uh make like a whole bunch of extra pieces so another another two pieces hem those and then just tack it to the side so this would be hidden because there'd be a pocket over the top i mean well it's royster really i've seen that on other bags looks cool could possibly look cool on this bag all right outsides are done let's move on to insides here's my insides so we don't need the base yet. Base will be last. Uh, but what we do need is our, not them, our zipper po pocket. Oh no, that is the zipper pocket. Hold on, what's going on here? All right, that's the zipper pocket. That I forgot to interface. So first thing I'm going to do is because it's not one solid piece, I'm going to stitch this together first. I'm using a two and a half stitch length. I'm just doing quarter of an inch. It's just to join it to make it easier later. As you can see, the tail is caught. Right. So now that that's one piece, I can pretend like I do with all my other uh, zipper pockets and just do it the same way. So I'm going to measure half an inch down from the stitching I just did. And then three quarters of an inch in and draw a line down and then draw a line along the ruler to join them and then i go three eighths of an inch down and draw another line so now we have a fun rectangle really need to get another table in here for all the stuff all right so now we want to stick our pocket in so I'm going to open it out so that the non-drawn side is up the top and I'm just going to line it up in the center. So the way I usually do that is I use my hands because your hands are about the same size. So if it fits between your hands, it tends to be in the same spot. I also don't want to go too far to the top because I have to remember that this is going to bend down. So I've moved down a little bit. I'm sure the pattern has official measurements that I have not mentally taken in. So I'm going to put it here. It's better to be too far down than too far up because it'll go into that top roll and you won't be able to get into your pocket properly. And then line it up. So I'm stitching all four and then when I get back I'm going to back stitch and then chop off the tails. I don't like tails hanging out. So like that. And then we're going to grab a pair of scissors. Whoops. And drop all the other scissors on the floor. Fold it in half and make a snip. So then we're going to cut the center of that box, or close enough to the center. It doesn't have to be perfect. Some people draw a line to cut across. Um, 
doesn't matter that much if you're not a hundred percent in the center just majority in the center is fine making sure that we're not trimming anything else while we're doing this and then when i get about half an inch from that end i'm going to do what's called what i call triangling out the corner so what that gives us is this fun little triangle here so now when i turn this out that way the corners will press out beautifully So I'm just going to roll this. Now you can iron this if you want to or finger press it. Whatever suits you. I'm going to finger press mine. And then I need some zip. So I've just got my box of zip here. Um, I know it looks like it's coming off the floor, but I promise it's not. And so I'm going to cut my zip the width of the entire pocket. Uh, not just the hole here because I want the edges to be caught in the seam when I stitch the pocket shut. If you're not going to do that, you'll have to put um, tabs on the end of your zip so that it doesn't fray and come undone. So I'm going to grab my fork, put my zipper pull in the fork, split my zip open just a little bit, so just a couple of inches, and then feed it in to my zip like so so now I've got my zipper pull move the zipper scissors I will need them again in a minute but that's okay so now I'm just going to place this over the hole making sure that the zip comes to the edge of the fabric I don't need it to go past just up to I'm going to do a couple of stitch forward and back to lock the stitches in place and then turn down and stitch along there. Now I'm just going to, when I get to the zip, just move it out of my way. So just make sure the needle's down every time I'm moving the zip so that I don't lose my place. Needle down and pivot again. Get rid of the piece of fluff. Zip it down out of the way and continue on. And then back stitch when we get back to the start. Trim that and the bottom. So you should also have a tail you need to chop off. And then just let the pocket naturally fold down and then we're going to just stitch the side. So I just fold this over, stitch down the side. Open my zip so I don't forget to do it later. sure I back stitch at both the start and the end so that my stitches don't come undone because if you have to stitch this up once you've made the bag it's gonna be difficult okay so now let's put in our main zip I assume that's where I'm up to so measure how long it is cut a piece of zip accordingly the different bag sizes will have different zipper measurements um, I know it's all in the pattern but this is just as easy for me because I've got it here anyway. I'm not going to put the zipper pulls on yet. I'm going to stitch it first. Now, if your bag, if you've done embroidery on your bag, you'll probably have a front versus a back. Uh, I always put my zipper pocket on the back. So when you're opening it from the front, you can see it. Uh, so this piece that I'm grabbing now would be the back panel if you had a front versus back, which I don't, so it doesn't matter for me. But I'm just saying for you, because, you know, you might have done like an embroidered front piece or something, in which case you would need to know that. So I'm going to do a couple of stitches and back stitch, like I always do. Now it won't come undone. And I'm just going to line up the three pieces and then stitch a bit. So this foot is running against the zip. You can't see it, but I can feel that it's doing that in here. 
and then I'm just lining it up again. Now, you could also um, wonder clip this. I will be wonder clipping the other side. It's gonna be way easier for me. Oh, it's gonna hit the table. I'm sorry if you move. Okay, I'll stitch all the way along. Up to three and three quarter stitch length. And I'm just gonna fold over just the top piece and leave the bottom and the zip this way so that this is going to fold over and then we're going to stitch it down so it's nice and flat. So probably an idea might be to do your foam perhaps half an inch less um, and then this won't be as bulky but that's also why we're stitching it down so it flattens out. If I was going to do that on a permanent regular basis I would uh, interface not interface, print, cut, and laminate a piece and then chop off the bit I didn't want as foam and then trace that around. So I'm just making sure that it's folded over and that the pocket, uh, the lining piece is out of the way because I don't want to stitch that in this. Also iron this, it would probably help. But I imagine this is already going to be a lengthy video without me getting up and changing everything to iron. You know how to iron. We did that in the last video. Alright, chop off the tails because you started and ended at the same spot. So now you should have this piece that is not tacked at the top and then this side that is. Alright, next piece. If you wanted to, you could put a second zipper pocket or you could put, um, I actually think I'm going to do the pleated pocket from the Hullabaloo in future because I love that pocket. I would buy that pattern just for the pocket. It's great. I can see it going in a lot of bags. Anyway, moving on. So I'm going to clip this because I think it's a good idea to for the second one because I don't want it to shift. I want to make sure that it's, you know, going to sit where I want it to. And then I'm going to add the third piece in. So we've got lining and zipper as the two pieces I'm joining. You could also base this in place. Just make sure that you're doing it close to the zipper edge and not the zipper tape. Would be my recommendation on that. So that's all my clips on. I'm going to just trim down some of this so it's at least in line here. Because again, I cut it a little bit too big. That was probably, not going to lie, that usually doesn't happen. I think it was just because I was cutting weed because the camera was leaning on the table. All right. Right sides down. Clip it in, so add it into your clips. So you could do this for both sides, you could baste it, you could do what I did and just do little sections at a time. There's not really a right and a wrong way. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Don't let a pattern tell you how it has to be made. You do what you want. All right, back to two and a half. Now this side you should be able to do quicker because you've basted it, theoretically anyway. Uh, you just want to make sure that it's not all pinching up. I think that just caught that. I'm going to have to double check, but I do not like, I don't know, we're okay. I thought it bunched up underneath and caught it. And again, I think I'm about to hit the table, so sorry that you're moving. I will bend this over. And then back stitch. Put the clips back in the bowl. Bring this back around. Open her up. I didn't catch it like I thought I did, but if I had a caught it, you should unpick it now. 
before you do this. Then you want to make sure that all the pieces are over here. And I'm just going to roll that because it's really in my way. It's a big bag to stick under the machine. But you also want to make sure that you're stitching down the seam allowance, making it nice and flat. So I'm just bringing my finger underneath and making, like, kind of pulling it out and then stitching along. Again, pull it up. The top stitching is important because it's going to help everything sit flatter and flatten down that extra little bit of foam that's now in that seam. So it's not as bulky as you would think, so I probably wouldn't come back and uh, fix that. I wouldn't go and make another whole piece and make the interfacing a little bit less, because it's really not that big of a deal. So now I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put two zipper pulls on this, one at each end, so when you open the bag you can open it down like that. So same as before, Split your zip just a little bit, doesn't matter, it's attached to stuff. And then feed it in evenly. If you don't feed it in evenly the first time, pull it off and do it again until you do. Practice makes perfect and all that jazz. Grab your other one. Pull this out so you can grab it well. I've also got a thread stuck in the zipper coil. So I'm just chopping that off to make sure that it's going to then go in nicely. Now I quite often stand up. I like to stand over my zip to stick it in. I don't know why. I just seem to have more success doing it that way than sitting down. Flat. All right, so I missed. So see how I've got this bubble on this side but not that side? That's because I know I put this one on wrong. I actually did it deliberately so you guys can see. That bubble means you need to pull off one of the zips and realign it. Now, usually you can tell if it's straight because the teeth at the end mesh up. Okay, happy days. So now I need to go and interface my side panels on the inside. Okay, before I go joining all the side pieces, I've just put three of the four rivets into the outside. Uh, it's going to be easier to do now. So obviously this doesn't fit to that center. So what I tend to do is I either fold it in half or in quarters just to be able to get that in there like this. So I'm just squishing it in so that I can get my hole punched to where it needs to be. Um, and then I can just put my rivets in. So setting the rivets is much easier than cutting the holes because there's more of a throat space in here than there is in the hole punch. Uh, but you tend to have to give the bag a final iron because we're going to turn it inside out anyway. And so now I've got my rivets on all four of the straps. And again, if you wanted to, you could be decorative and put several of them down. I just like that this gives a little bit of added stability to the bag. Okay. Lining. So we're going to take our lining piece. We're going to line it up, and it should line up really, really well the way we've done everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew these two bits together, so just the lining and not the outside, and I'm going to come up to the zip, but not over it. And that is important. We don't want to go over the zip, because uh, then it'll sit wonky. 
So I'm just on like a two and a half joining stitch. So I'm going to stitch up through the zip but not over it and back stitch just to lock the stitches in. And then chop off your tails because you're about to get a lot of them. And then I'm going to come from the other side and do the same thing. So again, make sure the zip's flat because then everything should fit lovely in. Back stitch. Hold the bag, or the weight of the bag should be on the table. And then back stitch there. Like that. Pull it out. Trim your few tails. See, so I always miss at least one tail. So now you've got a piece but you can get your finger through that hole. We are going to deal with that hole in a minute. But first, I'm going to come to the other side of this. Hey, Bobby. I'm going to grab the other piece. Join it so it lines up here. Hello. This is Knuckles. Hey, Knuckles. And the other jealous one that's about to push through is Cowboy. Isn't that right, is it? Hey? He's a very chatty one. He is Malamute Cross Boxer and he likes to talk. Don't you? You're just very chatty. Alright, so into the other side. Oh, see? I didn't have a long enough tail then and it all just came out. Now the thread I'm using today is not Vardenum thread. Um, it's just the last of what I have left in a yellow, but I have bought a yellow Vardenum. So as soon as this has run out, I will be switching to it. This is Seraphil polyester bonded. I don't think polyester bonded is as bonded as nylon is because I still get like weird flyaway bits that I don't like. But it's not terrible thread, like it's still strong, so I still use it, it's just slightly more annoying. Alright, so now we've got this going on. So we're going to do the same to the outside pieces. So we're going to grab our end, and I'm just going to flip this down so it's out of my way. I don't want to knock it with the needle, that'll snap it, it's not ideal. Now if you can't just hold it like I am, Please use uh, Wonder Clips or something, because this is a very big bag that keeps hitting a lot of things. Back stitch. And again, we're just going to stitch up to, but not over, the zipper. There is reason for this, I promise. Flip the bag over. Stitch, back stitch. Stitch up to here, back stitch, needle all the way up, but it'll come out. If you're finding your thread's not coming out, just move your needle. Usually it'll only come out freely if the needle is either all the way up or all the way down. Alright, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay both of these flat and then I'm going to stitch over all the layers but just where the gap is hello poppy this is cowboy who will be i think they want to go outside so let me just stitch across here and then i'm going to back stitch at the other side and then that has closed the gap while still making the zip look lovely I have to pause it and let the poppies out. Okay, so then we're going to do this same to the other side. So we're going to push this down, bring the other end over. So we've just got like this big heavy mess at the moment, but I promise we're getting there. Oh, I turned the machine off. Of course I did. the zip but not over it and then back stitch chopping off the tails flip the whole bag over so you can do the other side oh there's so much of it the medium is definitely a large bag i hate to think how big the big one is like you 
check-in size luggage, the other one, I reckon. I don't know. I feel like I'm going to make it just because I need to know the size of it. So then again, I'm going to flatten both of these out and just stitch over the zip so that these bits are going to be free to float as they feel. Needle all the way up. In, back stitch, over we go, back stitch. Now because there's no um, there's no D-ring that's attached to there because it's down the side. If it was if the D-ring was slotted into here, I would back stitch a lot more because it would be a weight bearing thing. But now it's just a zipper stopper thing. So just stitching over at the once I think is fine. You'll feel, feel free to do more if you want to, but I feel like it'd be fine. All right, take your lining pieces. I like this bag. It's just got like a cool dart. It's very easy to understand this bag. I'm a fan. I haven't read the instructions yet, except for the measurements. Whoops. I assume this is the way. You know, you watch. I'll wreck it now. I'll do it wrong. So I'm just going to pin from the bottom up to the uh, point, I guess it's going to be. And so it's got lines that you can mark. That is just to tell you what the seam allowance should be and where you should be sewing to. Because technically you sew past here. So we're actually going to sew all the way up to... Hang on, I'll show you. So here's where the, the point is. But technically we're going to sew up here. So the line that's on the pattern is just so that you sew it to there. Um, you Feel free to put the line in. However, I can just tell it's your seam allowance. So I'm just going to stitch the seam allowance. So we're on two and a half stitch length. And then I'm just going to slowly I put all my clips in the wrong way, so they're all facing the wrong way. Now the reason I'm doing the lining piece first is because once I add more bits with foam and start stitching that, it's going to be a lot more jagged and harder to manoeuvre. So by doing the lining pieces first, I can guarantee that they're all going to be nice. Now another thing, the seam allowance at the join I'm pointing towards the bottom of the bag. That is a conscious thing that I have chosen to do. And up we go. Once you get to the end, back stitch. Probably didn't need to do that much, but it made my point. And so now, ta da! It's all joined and beautiful. I don't know if you can see that, but it is beautiful. Very exciting. So now I'm going to do the other one. And then the other side. So you should have four of these to do. Um, if you're confident, you can not clip it or pin it. I think that this moves a little bit too much for me to do that. So I will happily put some clips on it and again we want to make sure that this little seam allowance points towards the bottom of the bag it's going to help everything sit flat and lovely and when in doubt you always want stuff to point down never want it to point up I just put two there because it gets a bit tight around that bend because of the mm, lack of movement from the foam. This might be why they said use fleece, but I think foam is going to give me a gloriously sturdy look. Make it more chic. I could be wrong. We're about to find out, I guess. If you've made it with fleece instead of foam, please come and show me in my sewing group because I am curious. If I have any spare time in life, I will make one out of fleece just to see. All right. Look at that. One So I know it doesn't look exciting, but it will. I promise. That's one end done. Now I'm going to come to the other end. 
I'm gonna try and attempt it without clips. This might be a disaster and I might have to unpick it, but you never know. Can't really get it wrong, it's a dog. Unless everything moves, that would suck. Making sure that I'm pointing that seam down. Stopping with my needle in the down position so that I can then readjust the rest of it. I know you can't really see because there's a big chunk of bag in the way. Backstitch, probably not that many times, although I would do it that many times if it was on the outer, the outside. Lovely. All right, should be one more. One more join. So again, from bottom to top. The pattern might say top to bottom. I'm genuinely not sure. But it guarantees that the bottom lines up if you start at the bottom. Make sure you do the right seam allowance, which I'm not checking that. I just assume it's a half inch because most bag patterns are half inch. If it's not half inch, I don't know if my bottom's going to fit. <sighs> seam allowance is something you should definitely check with patterns. As a side note from this potential disaster. Generally speaking, pattern makers will always stick with the same seam allowance because that's what they like. Um, most bags, I say most, not all, most bags are half inch, um, but some people do three eighths of an inch. So just be conscious of that. Okay, so now my bottom looks like a bottom. It looks lovely. So now we're gonna do the foam parts. Now this is gonna fight me a bit more, so I am definitely going to clip this because I'm now fighting the weight of the foam. So again, I'm gonna start from the bottom. Work my way up, use as many clips as you need to. You'll notice I'm using quite a few. I don't want this to shift while I'm putting it under the machine. That would suck and make it very, very difficult to fix. And since I don't like having to unpick if I can help it, this will prevent that. All right, make sure you backstitch. What's that noise? Oh, I think it's the zipper vibrating. One down, three to go. Don't really know why I put those clips away. Gonna need them all again now. You will also notice my uh, skull is back. I still use my other one, but it now lives on the cutting table for when I'm doing NCWs and things like that, and I need clips. I just have multiple bowls everywhere now because I love them, and why not? An update on the bowls, by the way. Um, I broke my machine. I'm waiting on a replacement part. These things happen, apparently. So again, I'm making sure that this points down if you don't make it point down, that's fine. Just make sure the other side points the same way. That's pretty important. You want it to be the same way. Otherwise, you're going to have like this weird twisty bit, which you don't want. Ah, oh, for anyone that's excited like me, that looks awesome. I am not going to, to attempt this without clips because of the bag foam. Again, I might if it was fleece, but I also think that the foam is going to give it like a glorious weight and shape. I could be wrong. I've been known to be wrong in the past. These things happen. Nobody's perfect. 
I really like uh, bag fleece for little things like clutches because they give a little bit of body without being too fluffy. So I do use a lot of uh, bag fleece, which I should probably stick on my website and share with you guys. Again, making sure that that flap points towards the bottom. Sewing around, veering off the top. Last side, huzzah. I need to stop saying huzzah. I watched The Great on Stan and now I can't stop saying it. If you've got a domestic machine, you can also trim this down if you're worried about it being too big for your machine to go over, like if it's too many layers. I would just clip it down before you stitch it. That'll solve that problem. Possibly should have just done it anyway, but it's going okay without it for me, so why wreck a good thing? So just put my finger in there to make sure that this bit up here is nice and smooth. And again, squish the bag so it's manageable size. Stitch and back stitch, and then up we go. Always stop with the needle in the down position. And back stitch. Awesome. So now it looks something like this. So it does stand up by itself, which I really like the idea of. Now I'm going to put the bottom in. So I'm going to fold it in half one way and then in half the other way. And then these two points here are the center points. Where are my scissors? I threw them on the floor. That's okay. Snip there. Snip there. So now I've got all four points on that. And then we just need to find the center point. So you just join the seam and then pull it out. And then that's the center point there. You can just do the same to all of the sides. You could also do this before you stitch it. It's probably not a bad idea. Um, unless your seams are uneven. And that one may not help you. The outside pieces, we already found the centre for some of them. Actually, all of them. So you won't have to do that except for the actual base piece. They should all have the center points for you already. All right, so make sure your zip is open. And then I'm going to take a long edge and a long edge and line up the little clips I made. I'm going to stick one clip in it there. And then I'm just going to come all the way out to here and clip the sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave one of the sides open so that I can turn the bag through because that's going to be easier than trying to get through the zipper pocket. So I'm just going to leave the bottom of the bag open on one little bit because it'll be easier to stitch up later. Take a bunch of clips, start clipping along. I always do the lining first. Uh, because again, then you don't have the bulk of the outside because we've got the stabilizer in it. I promise it's going to fight you. So if you can do it before we get there, much, much easier. All right. This fits really nicely. Oops. I'm almost tempted to not clip it, but I know if I do that, I'll wreck it. So we're going to clip it anyway. Just got really hot in here. I think my heater just kicked in. And this is like the business part of the bag that takes the longest, the most energy. So I'm just gonna decoat because it's hot. Right, there we go. 
last side, drain them up. So the more I make this bag, the more I can see that I won't have to clip this because it fits really nicely in. There's not a lot of easing to do, which is awesome. Uh, my jar is a little bit low on clips at the moment because it's currently holding the other project I was halfway through for an order before I decided to do the video because I woke up before everybody else in my household. So I've made three quarters of a swoon Stella bag before I did this video. Okay, funnily enough it was in yellow, which is why we've got so many bobbins going on. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to backstitch like I always do. You're going to get sick of me saying that if you watch a lot of my videos. Alright, and then around we go. So I'm just pulling off the clips as I go. I'm not going crazy fast because this is a very bulky bag and now you won't be able to see. Let's see if I can do a little crooked. So normally I would tell you, put the bag out, spin it as you go, but I'm also trying to make it so you can see what I'm doing. Makes it a little bit more difficult, but not impossible. So I started at the side that I'm keeping open and I'm just gonna sew around until I get to that last clip again. I'm always stopping in the down position before I readjust. I don't think you'll be able to see this bit, sorry guys. So I'm coming up to the last clip, so then I'm going to back stitch and done. So I've got this nice big gap here. This is where the bag's going to come through. Now I'm happy with my stitches. I'm looking to make sure nothing has pinched and cluttered and stuffed up. We're fine. So I'm going to take some scissors and then cut off some of that excess, especially around the curves, because it's going to help the base of the bag sit in the bag better because there'll be less things obstructing it getting into the corners. So I'm not being very methodical about this. I'm just twisting the bag as I go, making sure I'm not clipping the actual bag and only the seam allowance. And I'm bringing it down to about a quarter, or maybe just under. Because the, the, the less of this I can have, the flatter the bags will sit on the inside of the outside of the bag, if that makes sense, not really. I know what I mean. I also love that I'm arguing with myself right now. Alright. So now we're down to about a quarter of an inch. Throw that bit out. So now we're on to the base. Once I chop off all the tails I left behind while I was stitching the sides together. Okay. Yellow. If you want to put bag feet on, now is the time to do it. Uh, but I'm going to fold this in half. And against my better judgment, I'm going to use my clips. No, I'm not. I'm going to get the proper scissors so that I don't cut myself. So instead of folding it in quarters, I won't be doing that because that won't work because of the stabilizer. So another thing you could do is mark your pattern so that you can just put a like a fabric or pen mark. Or you could clip it before we put the stabilizer on. Now I've got a little bit of a mark here, but it's actually within my seam allowance, so I'm not overly worried about it. I did see it, I'm consciously aware of it, it'll be fine. Okay, final piece. So I'm gonna start with the long edges and I'm gonna Pick out my clips because I like a little bit of chaos. So when working on a side, I always put more than one clip because one clip means it can move around too much and it won't stay where you want it to. I will also always put more clips on the outside pieces than the inside because they're firmer and therefore are going to fight me more. So I'm going to come across and I'm going to do the opposite side. 
And again, you should have already clipped or marked the center. Oh, that's, oh, that one's broken. Let's work my way across and then come back the other way. Like so. Right, so now I've got those two sides. I'm going to switch around and do the short edge and line that up in the center. If you can't see your mark, it's the center of your strap connector. Easy way to figure that out. All right, now on the curve, I am going to A, see this excess here? I'm going to chop it down, make it less, make it easier to sew like that. Then add more clips. Lots and lots of clips on curves because when trying to push the bag through the machine, it tends to fight the machine and then pulls the clips off. Happens all the time when I make Maisie by Swoon. I make a lot of swoon bags. I say the word swoon a lot. So I'm just clipping round and round and round. Trim off the excess. I'm just tapering it out. I can cut off more later if I don't want it there. So now I've done half the bagging clips and I've just got the last of the corners to go. Oh, that's the dodgy one. The, um, the metal spring part has half come off, so it won't open properly. If I play with it too much, it'll probably fling off into my face, which is not ideal. All right, last corner. Then we are done, and we can just stitch it on again, trim off. Some of that excess. One more clip for good measure. Right. That is a lot of clips. Don't judge me. It's fine. All right. So I'm going to start on a straight bit because that's always the easiest place to start. I'm also going to make sure I'm not going to uh, stitch my pocket because I know I've done it in the past. Too busy talking, not enough checking what I'm doing. All right, couple stitches forward, couple stitches back. Now it's locked in, off we go. So slow and steady. Actually, I might move the camera. Hold on. There you go. Now you can see. I love that that thing's on wheels. That was so quick. So I'm just pulling it around as I go. And then I'm going to stop and put my clips away so that I don't get in too much of a mess. Do you notice I'm holding the bag up on an angle because we're going around a bend? Was stitching it's not going to be enough to notice but it's just that's because it's fighting me you also notice i'm sewing with the bottom face up uh, because it's just easier i guess i don't know i always find it easier this way because i'm not trying to squash the whole bag down as much as i can just hold it up for me it's ultimately easier and if anything's going to move, it's going to be the base piece, so I'll be able to see and then readjust. So I'm just going to go slightly past there, where I started. 
chop off all the tails and then I'm going to look from the top and make sure that nothing pinched. If anything's pinched we need to undo it and redo it. But it all looks pretty good. So I'm going to, actually I'm going to grab these scissors. So I'm going to use my class A scissors because they're my bolt cutting scissors, not the other ones. And I'm just going to trim off round the curves so that again the bag is going to sit flatter. Probably can't really see what I'm doing now that I've changed angles. Maybe we'll change back. Here you go. So I'm just chopping down the angles. It's going to help everything sit smoother and nicer. Just be nicer. Okay, I'm going to change the camera of the angle of the camera, camera angle, whichever. I'll be right back in two secs. Oh no, it stopped recording. I don't know what happened there, but I've stitched the bottom of the base. Now I'm just going to take the pocket, turn the raw edges in. I don't know how much I've just missed, uh, but I turned the bag inside out and then stitched the hole in the bottom shut. Now I'm just going to stitch along here. So I'm just folding the raw edges in and stitching as close to that edge as I can and I just run out of bobbin thread as well. Luckily for me, I have a third one on hand. So I have it, my first one wasn't full, my second one was full and now we're on the third one. So it does use a fair amount of thread, but it is a really big bag so I can definitely see why. And if you wanted to use less thread, you could just not do the fancy stitching on the strap connectors that I did. I just like it there. Make sure that we back stitch at both ends. Push that in. Zip it up. Push the lining in and out push this bit out so it sits nice. You just run your hand along the seam. Oh, look at this. This is glorious. This is. Right, so I'm just pushing along that seam. And then that is the size of the bag. In comparison to my head, that thing is huge. Right. Straps, because we've already done them. We just need to measure them up and attach them. So I might actually start with my long strap. So I'm going to start with the one of the edges. It doesn't actually really matter. And I'm going to put it up and through the strap adjuster with the vinyl touching itself. And then that way this is going to be pretty on the outside. So I'm just going to move it and maneuver it in. And then I'm just going to top stitch with a three and three quarter stitch length. I'm going to do two lines. So I'm going to do a line and then a quarter inch over. I'm going to do another line. I don't want to over stitch it because that's over perforating it. And we don't want to do that either. Stitch and then back stitch. Then we just chop off all those excess threads that are floating around of which there are many, right? And then we grab our, so this is a swivel clip, but you can also get ones that just go back and forth. With swivel clips, it doesn't matter how you put them on, the back and forth ones, think about which way you want the clip to face. I always like mine facing out, so you just have to be conscious when you build it, which way to put it. So I'm just feeding this corner through and it's fighting me a little bit. I'm not sure why. Possibly because I'm trying to hurry in case my video cuts out again. It's not a battery thing because I went and got the battery pack before because I've nearly used a full battery all day. Anyway, bring that in and through. So that is now on and then I'm going to grab the other one and again make the vinyl fold onto itself. And again, these are swivel clips, so it doesn't matter which way they are facing. I'm gonna have the short side up so I can see what I'm stitching. 
I'm gonna stitch a line and then do a quarter of an inch of another line. Like that. Back stitch, stitch along, back stitch. And that is all the sewing done. You could have also uh, done rivets on this to join it if you would have preferred. We're gonna do rivets for the handles though. Okay. So that is your adjustable strap 100% done. This thing is a mammoth bag, I tell you what. Alright. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I've got four rivets. I'm now going to take a ruler, a pen, and the hole punch. Now I've used the thicker metal, which means I need to make sure that I allow enough room for that. So I'm gonna mark half an inch up, and then I'm gonna mark one and a quarter inch from that mark. The one and a quarter inch will allow you to get all the way around. If you're using the skinnier metal, one inch is fine, but the big ones need one and a quarter. So I'm just going to mark that everywhere and then I'll go along and punch the holes. So that's both of those, that one, and then just this one. So half an inch up and then one and a quarter, which also just happens to be where the writing is on this end of the ruler. I probably should have turned it around, but anyway. All right, take your hole punch. Now I'm gonna individually hole punch all of these holes. My hole punch is a little bit dying. I don't know how, but I recently managed to revamp it a bit, so it was better. So I just twist this and it helps cut the hole properly. And then because it's fabric on the outside, I'm going to get a little bit of fray stuff or glue so that we don't have a disaster later down the track. So I use the Helmar brand. I've had this bottle for a couple of years. You only use the tiniest amount. So I think they're, I don't know, they're under $10 from Spotlight. And it comes out like water. So don't um, squeeze it, whatever you do. You just dab it on and it comes drooling out. So dab, dab, like that. I'm not even gonna let it dry because it's fine. And then I'm gonna grab my rivet setting press. So when I do my handles, if I've done them all vinyl, I make the join face the center. But because it's like this, it doesn't matter. So I put it up and in. Rivet in one side and then the other, and it should fit nicely. It should be snug without being tight. Because um, if you do it too tight, it's likely to wear the strap out quicker, which we don't want, obviously. So that's one, and then I hold it flat, twist it around, and then up and in again. Rivet in. Now, it doesn't matter if you put the rivets in bottom to top or top to bottom, because... Well, it doesn't matter for me. I'm using double capped rivets, which means it's got a smooth end on both. You can get single capped rivets. So if you did accidentally buy them, uh, you just make sure it's going to be on the short end so that when you're holding the bag, the smooth end's facing out. That's all. Stick a cap on. They usually click or you feel them kind of give in a little bit and then you know it's not going to move while you maneuver into the rivet press so again one on up click it on oh, i really like this bag okay We are all done. 
So I am going to, I need to let it sit for a bit, and I'm going to go along all the edges and just kind of roll them out and pinch them and do that thing where I do this. I don't know what to call that. The Tory move. Uh, so that is just going to help make that a solid crease. So I'm going to do that all the way along those edges to make it sit really nicely. So there you go. That is the bag all done. I hope this was helpful. I know it was long. Sorry about that, guys. I talk too much. It's fine.